Well, good morning, guys. It's been a, a little while since I've made an upload, and uh, the reason for today's video is uh, is actually twofold. One is that I wanted to uh, kind of show some of my ring knives here and the different variations um, on that theme that I uh, that I've taken this design to, uh, as far as handle materials and in one particular knife, the actual shape of the knife. Now this is my standard model ring knife with 01 steel and black micarta on a black sheath and I use carbon fiber pins. This is the one that's really popular with law enforcement uh, and I found here in my town and I sold several of these and again that is just my standard model um, and then here's one that I made for Kim um, and this one uses white G10 for the handle material and you can see the grain pattern in that G10 but it still has the blued 01 steel and it's the very same pattern as this first knife and then over here uh, this is one I made for myself and I was just playing around I had some uh, small pieces of the elk antler uh, I wanted to try to make one of these with an elk antler handle I don't know if I'll make very many of these, this one is going to be for my personal use. I've not even made a sheath for this yet. But as again, just playing around in this one, I have uh, CPM 154, the stainless grade, for this knife. And then uh, for something a little bit different, I, I designed a second version of this ring knife, and that's this one here. And I'm going to show the two of them side by side so you can see a little bit of difference in the design. Um, the one on the bottom, the, the blade is about a quarter inch longer, and um, there's some curves designed into the, the shape of the knife. Back here, where the ring forms, if you notice over the above knife, and then of course the, um, the blade itself on the top has a, has a little gentle ring curve, uh, recurve to it, sorry. And um, I just, like I said, just wanted to offer something a little bit different to folks, and this seems to be popular. In fact, this knife uh, sold this morning, so um, that's one other reason for the video. Now, um, the guy that bought this is an old Navy buddy of mine. His name is Bob, and on the ship we called him Buzz, and he was a, um, he was a mess service specialist, which means cook. And I got to know him... Um, when you first report on board ship, if you're an enlisted guy, the first thing you do, no matter what your actual job is, is you rotate through the, the mess decks to give uh, the cooks some help. And um, I really enjoyed my time doing that so much, in fact, that when we were short of some new guys and they were asking for volunteers to rotate back through the mess decks for another three-month period, I raised my hand. I, and I really enjoyed those guys. I made friends with a lot of them. And I'm still friends with them today. And in fact, it was on Facebook where I posted a picture of this knife. And he saw that. And he contacted me this morning. And uh, we did the deal. And so this is going to be uh, bound for Maine where Buzz lives. So another thing that I offered Buzz, since I made Brian's fillet knife. And Brian wanted USS McDonough, DDG-39, which was our ship, put on his blade. I offered to do that for Buzz since I still have the stencils for it. So I'm going to be putting that on here, and I'm going to video that process for him so he can, he can watch the, uh, the logo being applied. But I just wanted to show uh, the different styles of my ring knives, and I don't know which one's going to be more popular. Uh, this one is really, is really popular with uh, the cops around London. I've sold several of these in this black on black uh, version, and they just uh, they tuck it into their, their vest as something handy in case they need something that can be quick at hand when they need something like that. Um, Buzz is a fisherman. He's going to put this one in his tackle box, he said, but I'm going to cut away over to the uh, marking machine where we're going to be putting USS McDonough on this, and then we're going to be getting this one uh, packaged up and ready to go. It's already very sharp. Um, and the handle material is another little variation I wanted to point out. Now, this is not ivory. Uh, I won't use ivory in my shop just because uh, the ivory trade, you know, there's a lot of poaching that happens. And if you can't get certified ivory that was harvested in a humane way 
from a dead animal or something like that. Um, chances are the ivory came from a, a poacher's bullet. I won't support that trade. This is paper micarta ivory. It's very tough. It's tougher than the real thing, and it's, uh, it's really pretty. And there's another version of this called alternative ivory, which I will be ordering some and using that. But this is as close to ivory um, as I will get in my shop. But it's still, it's, it's really nice looking stuff, and it is durable. So we're going to get this one marked out and packaged up and get it off to Buzz today. But I wanted to show that to you guys and then just show um, some variations on the theme um, with my different knives. And again, this is the same standard model, just in CPM with an elk antler handle. But um, yeah, you can, you can see the differences. And then the sheaths themselves... You have the two standard sheaths, and then this, um, if somebody wants, I can incorporate this little grommet tab at the base to lash this down and decide, you know, inside of something, like a pocketbook or just whatever. The knife can even be hung around your neck, and you adjust this tensioning screw, and it'll hold the knife really tightly so it won't fall out of the sheath. I don't do this normally. They just usually come out looking like this. But if someone really wanted one, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd include this little tab when I make the sheath. And so this one's Kim's knife. And she, carry this, she carries this in her purse. And this one is already sold. Just waiting for the uh, customer to be ready to pick it up. And of course this one sold this morning. So I'm happy with the popularity of these little knives. So... I'll come back over at the marking machine where we're putting the McDonald logo on this side of the knife. Okay, I have everything set up here. I've got the marking solution saturating my felt pad. I've got the logo applied. So we're going to go ahead and apply this. First DC current. Move the leads over to the AC current side, and that's going to blacken these letters just a little bit. All right, let's see what we've got under here. All right, we've got a good sharp edge. Turn this off. We're going to throw the felt away. All right, let me get all this stuff cleaned up, and I'll show you the logo. Okay, got the logo applied now. And I'm going to take a couple of still photos of this, or maybe just grab them out of the video, because Buzz asked me if I would uh, take a couple of snapshots of this and send them to him via Facebook Messenger. So I said, well, sure I would. But yeah, Mac logo turned out really nice. And uh, once again, the Mighty Mac lives on uh, in our memories. But that's the knife, Buzz. And I'm glad I was able to do just a little bit of video for you. Since I did not video the building of this knife. And you, you, you saw it after it was finished. But still, wanted to do something. So there's the uh, Maker's Mark side. And then there's the, uh, the McDonough side. So it's getting in the mail today, Buzz. Thanks a lot. And thank you guys. We'll see you later.